welcome to Project Home DIY. My name is Christine Gloat, the owner, founder, and designer of your Project Home projects. Thanks for joining us this month where we get to rise to the occasion. It all makes sense now, doesn't it? If you're part of our VIP group, we do allow um, some spoilers throughout the month and we did say it several times, rise to the occasion and people were kind of like, rise, that's gotta be a hint. So of course it is, we're gonna make our own risers. So you'll find and um, your little succulent potted planters, which are a super cute additional touch. So with this, you extra tools you may need, um, make sure your glue gun is plugged in. We'll use it for the beads. Um, make sure you have some sort of glue. We'll use it for the rocks. Um, and then of course your sanding block from your starter kit, the paints or stains that you want to use on the risers and the legs, and you can paint these as well. Um, anything like that you're going to need, but just make sure your hot glue gun is plugged in, ready to go, and we can get started. I'm going to move you guys a little bit closer, up closer so you can see um, what's going on over here. And you can see right above what we're doing. So let's get started with Rise to the Occasion. Okay, so first things first here. Let's get our risers stained or painted, whatever you choose to do. But that way it'll give these time to dry while we assemble the planters. So I'm just gonna move this stuff to the side. Huge disclaimer, and I'm gonna say this a couple times throughout the video, but these are resin beads. If yours happen to break apart when you're stretching them out, that is okay. When you glue them in to the, um, into the space where they go, you won't even notice them. And they, <clears throat> this is pretty much how they come because you can break them into the right size that you need to fill the space. And they needed to be pliable and movable in order to trim the ends of them if you need to or anything to make them fit your exact space. So if they break, it is not, a big deal at all because once they're in there you'd never know so the resin beads can crack and split especially if they're not very warm if they're cool to the touch they can split and crack and it's not a big deal um, they don't need replaced there's nothing wrong with them so just a little disclaimer I will say it again throughout the video but I'm gonna set out some paper you guys get lots of paper in your boxes, which can be reused to um, keep your workspace nice and clean while you're working. So for mine, um, I've really kind of fallen in love with this blonde wood look. And an easy way to achieve that is just to take a white stain or make this out of diluted paint. Some people call it a pickling wash. Um, in this case, it's an antique white stain, um, but I'm gonna use this antique white stain, wood stain from Rust-Oleum. It gives a super pretty whitewashed finish, but this wood is like killer. Like I just love wood, um, and so I really wanted this to show through. So that's why I chose to go with a white stain. Um, very first thing before we start though, Take your sanding block and sand in all the edges. Just make sure there's no rough spots. Just give it a good sand in those cut pieces. It doesn't take much effort, but it sure makes the finished product look that much better. I did sample some stain right there. So I'm sanding that back off. Easy as that. I'm just going around the top, sanding that edge, making it nice and smooth on the top, and then I wipe it. Okay. Just sand any spots that need to have a little bit of roughness. Like right here, you can see a little tiny wood. Just sand that.
They're all sanded. If you have some rough spots on the legs, you can sand them up a bit. They're a little more difficult to sand, of course, because they're rounded. But that's a good thing about a sponge is it kind of conforms to edges too. Okay, if you make a um, pickling wash, you can use um, the cotton paint or you can use any kind of white paint that you have. This happens to be a satin enamel from Art Deco. Anything water-based, you can pour it in your tray, add a little bit of water, mix it up, and then you can paint it on or wipe it on with a cloth, wipe it on with a baby wipe, um, anything like that. If you don't have access to an antiquing stain or to an antique white stain or a white stain and don't, or don't wanna buy anything, you can definitely make it out of this. Um, and it's super, super easy to do. So um, don't feel like you need to run out and buy anything extra because you definitely don't. You can just use um, what you already have using your paint tray and water and dilute it down. You can do that with any color, honestly. And it's actually sometimes easier to use a, um, a pen diluted paint than it is stained because it sets all right, it sets much quicker than this does. This is a one hour stain. It's supposed to be set up in about an hour. We'll see. So I take, and I wear gloves when I stain, this stuff gets all over. It is oil-based, it is not water-based. They do have a few water-based colors. I do not know if they have the antique white in it, but make sure you shake your stains up really well um, or else you'll be sad when you go to stain, there won't be much pigment. And I just use a, nothing special, it's an old washcloth. Um, I actually just buy washcloths in bulk and cut them up. But this is the look I'm going for. So you can kind of see it right there. So I'm just gonna stain these up. If you are using the beads and it's gonna be a different color than white, you'll want to, of course, stain those as well. But don't put them in yet until the project is done. So I am even staining in that trough. I like to get the stain everywhere. And then I'll go over and fix it. Look, this looks like a mess. But I will go over and fix it. I like to offload my rag, my wet rag, in a larger surface and then go work in a smaller area. gonna smooth out the top. Oh, I see that red coming through. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see the difference right there in the whitewashed and the non-whitewashed. So that's the look I'm going for. I love wood grain, so I wanna keep that, but I just wanna blonde it out a bit. And that's what I did there. So I'm gonna set these to the side, let them dry, and I'm gonna work on this one. And then I'm gonna stain the legs. Okay, I'm done painting or staining the legs, but I'm noticing that this wood is so grainy that it's not taking my, or the stain is just soaking up so much. So I'm going to actually um, paint them. And yeah, I'm gonna paint them so I can get that white look, the white to come through. So um, any kind of white paint that you have, I prefer to use just any latex paint. Honestly, um, I feel like like latex house paint just gives you um, a good, even, easy finish. I don't have any with me right now, 
but I just have this satin enamel I'll use. I'm still gonna put one glove on because these might be a little stained on the top, but um, let me get, yeah, look at that. Didn't even take. On some of them it did, but some it didn't. So I'm just gonna paint over them real quick and go from there. And even if my paint is not like super perfect, that's okay. Okay, one dip of the paintbrush and that's covered. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, there's all the legs. Just gonna let them sit here and dry. In the meantime, I'm going to, I just thought of this and for the resin beads, I'm gonna do something a little different. See if I can move this without knocking them over. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna do something a little different for the resin beads. And this might be something you would want to do if um, you want them to be a solid color and aren't able to get that solid color with paint. But I'm going to take my hot glue gun and just put a little dab of hot glue on this so it sticks flat down to the paper. Might pull up the paper, but if I get enough of them on there, we'll see what happens. This is just a temporary hold it. I want it to stay flat for right now. Get these out. And I'm gonna spray paint them. And I'm gonna spray paint them gold. I think that'd be super pretty. A gold band through the center of these risers. And then on the ceramic planters, I'm gonna tape off and I'm gonna paint this bottom half gold too. That is my plan. So I'm gonna use spray paint because sometimes it's just easier to get in all those little nooks and crannies with spray paint than it is anything else. Taping these down so that I will stay. When I spray paint, Working pretty good. Remember, like I said again, with these resin beads, if they're cold, um, they will, they can break apart, but don't worry about it. When you piece them together into your um, project, into your wood, you won't be able to tell at all. And they're meant to be pliable. Um, and actually they're totally optional. If you don't like the look of the beads, you don't have to use them at all. But I did, and I'm gonna use them. So I'm gonna take, um, I do have, I think I'm gonna use the same gold as the spray paint, unless I have a gold I like in paint. But I'm gonna grab the gold spray paint. It's right around the corner. Okay, looking over, I don't have spray paint, but still these will be much easier to paint if they're down like that. But I'm trying to find, the right gold color that I would want to use. This one might not be it, because it might be empty. That might be it, let's see. And I'm just gonna stipple them like this. Oh yeah, that's covering, it's perfect. Okay, all those are painted. I'm just gonna set them to the side as well. Whoa. Let them dry along with the legs. They're drying nicely. Okay, I just about ran out of gold paint, but I didn't. I'm gonna take some paint 
and just tape off the part of the planter that I don't want to get plant on or paint on. That'll just make it a much easier process, but this gold will kind of tie each other in to that piece on the risers. Just give it a touch of class. You can paint the planters fully if you want. You can leave them as they are. Okay, since I ran out of paint before, we're gonna see what color we have now. Oh, that's good. That'll work. Okay, and I'm just gonna take my brush and paint this on. Okay, I'm gonna give these a moment to dry. <clears throat> and then we'll go from there once they're dry. Hot glue gun strings, of course. Most evil thing ever in the world of crafting, hot glue gun strings, right? I'm gonna set these in the dryer. Okay, everybody's always wondering what kind of heater I use to set them in a dryer, but it's just this little guy. That's one, really easy to use. I just set them in front of it. They'll dry nicely. Okay, I just put a second coat on the gold and while it's wet, I'm gonna peel this tape off. And look at that, beautiful. The perfect little accent. If your paint leaked at all, you see there's a tiny bit. Um, take an X-Acto blade and you can scrape it up anywhere you need to and clean that up, okay? You can pretty much do this when it's dry as well. Since this is ceramic, it'll just kind of scrape off of there. There's that one. I'm gonna paint the second on this one. And peel it. Perfect little gold touch. And then this gold stuff is drying as well. And I got paint brushes. Okay, I'm gonna clean up so then I can assemble my, the succulent planters. So we'll, when we come back, that's what we'll do next. Okay, you guys, remember that cute little break I just took to let things dry? Well, I forgot to turn the video back on when I did these planters. So I already did the rocks, but easy as pie let me show you exactly what i did i took the rocks and let me get this paper we'll start over i'm gonna make another set Here's my planter, here's my succulent, and the rocks, and the moss. The moss is messy. It is very fine. It is very messy. So use it with caution. If you grab just any kind of school glue, white glue, Elmer's glue, We will use that for this, <clears throat> for gluing the rocks together. So take your glue and <clears throat> you're gonna use quite a bit for 
making the rocks into just one piece. We just want them to kind of stay together. If we just pour these little rocks in there, you're probably, if they get tipped over, you're gonna have a mess. So we wanna be able to incorporate the rocks with some sort of glue. So I dumped out the rocks there. I'm just gonna mix them together with the glue. Make kind of this messy cement. And it gets everywhere on your fingers and sticks nicely. Add a little bit more glue. The glue will dry clear, you won't even notice, but it'll at least keep our rocks together. It'll keep everything from making a mess if they ever get tipped over. That would never happen though. Nobody has pets or kids or anything, so we'd never tip anything over. Okay, so inside the styrofoam, again, take the glue and just paint the styrofoam a little bit, just like that. And then the easiest way to work with the moss, just cut a corner of the bag open and then dump some in there. And then we'll spread it out. The moss is essentially gonna be covered with the rocks too, but it just kind of gets rid of the white. We don't want that white styrofoam look. We want that to go away. Okay, then we'll take our rocks which gets really sticky, messy. We'll blob them in there like that. Flatten it. And then we'll take the moss again and sprinkle a little moss just for color. Okay, and all that will stick together and then, let me wipe my hands off. Oh, these rocks are gonna be everywhere. And then, if you guys have kids like mine that love to pull these things out, I'm gonna hot glue this sucker in there. So just hot glue on the stem and stick it into place. And that's how you finish the planter, round two now that I had to record it twice. So now you get the idea. This is without the gold rim. This is with. So I painted gold around that one um, and mine and this is just a plain one. So just depending on the look that you like. Good thing about using paper, we can crumple it all up when we're done and throw it all away and maybe not push things onto the floor. Okay, um, now with our risers, I put the legs on one of them. Fully assembled, it's gonna look something like that. Once um, you get, for my sanding block, once you get the risers put together, you can sand just a little bit to finish off any rough spots, sand off the legs if you wanna have some more worn. Um, just kind of finish it off to your liking. Okay, there's one. Ta-da, it's all coming together. There you go. Okay, so these legs just screw in. If you have any trouble with the legs staying tight, just put a dab of hot glue in your spindle and then screw them in like that one right there. Didn't work. I think that spindle is too deep. So I'm just gonna let that one go like that. And we're just gonna know that one's hot glued and let it set for a second. Okay, that one grabbed nicely. That one did. I'm gonna set it like this. Okay. Sand it up. And look at that blonde wood. So pretty. Okay, let me wipe up this. My hands are covered in rocks and moss. That's our doorbell. Someone's coming. Okay, so we see those. 
Last but not least, we are going to piece in the beading. So this is without beading and um, you can choose if you like it or don't, but it's super simple. I'm gonna pull those pieces off. Remember I hot glued them so there might be a little bit of hot glue and paper, so peel that away. But this is what it will look like finished with the beading in there. So pretty simple technique, just like that. Just place it in, um, even it up with the sides and then just run a hot, bead of hot glue in there, just like this. And stick the beads in. placing these beads in again with the beads if they there if they break um, you can when you piece them in just glue them in together so you'll never even notice but um, I'm gonna finish placing these in and we should be finished and good to go you don't have to stop it. yeah you can stop it well no And that is your completed March project. Thank you so much for joining us and making this one of a kind piece your very own. It's so much better than just going to the store and buying something pre-made because you can make it yours and be proud of what you did. And you know every little piece behind it and can kind of giggle and go, oh yeah, I remember when I spilled all the moss around, but it just becomes a creation and a special creative process for you. Don't sell yourself short and always Take the time to create. If you're curious about our three-tiered tray or three-tiered wall shelf, excuse me, it is in our store. The baseball kit was released end of February, which is one month before our spring opening of baseball. So this is available in our store, minus the St. Louis logo, because I would not want to put my opinions on anybody else, but that is my team. You will get the love with the baseball logo block instead. So make sure you take advantage of those special one-time kits that are offered through our VIP group. Join our VIP group, which is on the bottom of your instructions. But most of all, enjoy this beautiful creation that you just made. Thanks for joining us and see you next month. Bye.